After making weapons in the Black Armory's forges for a month and believing I'd experienced all the weapons they have to offer, I was surprised to find that they had one more trick up their sleeves. But unfortunately, their final trick is a sword. In Destiny 2, swords are considered heavy weapons, which means they occupy a heavily contested weapon slot that's reserved for guns like Whisper of the Worm and the Black Armory's own hammerhead machine gun. The effectiveness of these guns makes using an old-school, close-quarters weapon like a sword feel like a handicap despite them being able to output impressive damage. The Black Armory Striker Shorehand has access to the exact same perks and traits as every other legendary adaptive frame sword, so it's not breaking any ground, but it does have access to Surrounded. This trait increases your damage when you're near three or more enemies, and when it's active and combined with other sword traits, you'll be in possession of the hardest hitting sword in the game. Stack surrounded with Tireless Blade, which refunds ammo for every other sword kill, and you'll have a highly efficient close quarters killing machine. But the question is, is it worth it? The Striker's Shorehand is incredibly gratifying, and if you can position yourself correctly during a fight, you'll be rewarded for your efforts. Unfortunately, the rewards aren't as easy to acquire as the rewards you get from a more practical weapon like a machine gun. With that in mind, there are plenty of things you can do to optimize your play with a sword. Sword Reserve and Scavenger perks will increase your weapon's uptime, but aren't completely necessary in the same way Rocket Launcher Reserve and Scavenger perks are. Your sword will have between 36 and 47 ammo without any armor perks, which is more than enough to melt a boss or multiple major enemies without running out. This gives you the freedom to beef up your special weapon instead. The more important choices will be your subclass and exotic armor. For Titans, the Code of the Commander will give you the ability to heal yourself mid-fight via your Void Detonators. Tag a boss with an ability before you charge in and you'll be able to sustain yourself a bit longer while you fight. Titans can also mitigate the damage and knockback from enemy stomp attacks with the Towering Barricade. Place one down before you charge in to avoid getting splattered against a wall, and be ready to run back behind your cover when the boss is ready to stomp again. For exotic armor, across all classes, movement speed boots will help you close the gap between you and your enemies. But health sustain exotics are great choices as well. For hunters, the Worm Husk Crown can keep you healthy during combat, especially if you're wearing five Paragon mods. The same is true for the Titan's Crest of Alpha Loopy. The Warlock is the best suited for fighting tough enemies with swords because of their rifts and rift-enhancing exotics. In general, you can outheal a boss's damage with a normal healing rift, and with a Well of Radiance, you're basically invincible. With the right loadout and mindset, you can slice some serious ass with a sword, and the Striker's Sure Hand is a great one to use. It's the strongest legendary sword in the game, but at the end of the day, it's just a sword. So, despite knowing that the Black Armory's intentions were never to innovate, I can't help but be disappointed at them for meeting my expectations. Thankfully, there are some weapons makers that are more interested in style and spectacle than unrivaled power. They care more about designing something that creates an experience that will be remembered for a lifetime. A weapon that, when wielded, will create moments and stories that you'll tell your friends about for years to come. Swords in Destiny 2 will never be optimal, and the Black Armory weaponsmiths failed to realize this. They made the strongest sword in the galaxy, but never stopped to ask themselves if anyone would give a damn about using it. The makers of the Black Talon and World Line Zero exotic swords understood this and opted to make their weapons special. The Black Talon's exotic perk, Crow's Wings, allows you to launch void projectiles with your heavy attack. This attack isn't ammo efficient, it deals less damage than an adaptive sword's traditional uppercut, but it does negate the main weakness of a close quarters weapon, range. Crow's wings can be chained together while grounded and a single projectile can be launched while airborne. The Black Talon also features the trait Tireless Blade, which refunds one ammo on every other sword kill. The World Line Zero's exotic perk is Tesseract. After sprinting for a short distance, activate your heavy attack to teleport and deal damage to all enemies in a large cone in front of you. The teleport isn't as far as I'd like it to be, but it's far enough that you'll save yourself a few steps when you're closing distance between you and an enemy. The wide arc on the Tesseract ability also makes your sword significantly more effective at killing bunched up enemies, and thus eliminating another one of the sword's main weaknesses. 
These two exotic swords will never fully replace more practical guns like the Hammerhead, but in situations that allow it, they can be incredibly satisfying, and their effectiveness will surprise you. The same is true for the Striker's Shorehand, but it doesn't have anything memorable about it that will allow it to survive the test of time. <laughs> And there we go, that's gonna do it for our review of the Striker Shorehand and the Black Talon and the World Line Zero. There was a lot of stuff packed into this episode, but it was a lot of fun to make as always. Swords in Destiny 2, they're not optimal, but they change the way the game feels a lot. Shifting to that third person point of view and then hacking and slashing like you're playing Dynasty Warrior, it's very satisfying if you can make it work. Before we close out, I want to give another shout out to my first and currently only patron, Avi. You are awesome, and thank you so much for providing support. It is greatly appreciated. For anyone else that would like to provide more support for the channel than you already do just by watching, liking, and subscribing, you can head over to patreon.com slash iblueairjgr and become a patron. With all of that said, we're going to wrap things up here by saying the name of the game is Destiny 2. The name of the channel is iblueairjgr. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.